So I made this uh, movie recently saying that, uh, criticizing the Sunnism regarding Wata. And I want to be balanced because uh, when I appreciate, I want to be balanced. When I be critical, I want to be balanced. But critique Shiism also, which is when I say ism in regard to these things, I mean like the traditional forms, the absolutized traditional forms of these things. So today I'm, I'm criticizing the Shia concept of the Mahdi. So basically, just quickly, you know my views on this. I believe in the 12 Masum Imams at the beginning of history. When I say Masum, that's the Shia word, but I say Mutahir. I don't say Masum, I say Mutahir, Mahdi Imams and Rashid Imams, right? And um, But I, I disagree with the identity of the 12th one, whereas the Shias or Shiaism, Itna Asharism, says that it's the it says it's the um, uh, it's Imam al Mahdi and he was the son of the 11th. I disagree with that. And I say, no, there was 12 at the beginning of history and there will be another one at the end of history. And I agree with the Sunni concept fully of the Sunni Mahdi. Um, that he will be from the line of Hassan. But I understand the wisdom then of this better than both traditional sides, the both traditional narratives. Because actually, you have to look at the biblical narrative. And when you look at the biblical narrative, you realize uh, that uh, Nabi sallallahu the ummah of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam has two mithal. One mithal is with the millat of Ibrahim in which it itself is included alongside the uh, the ummah of Musa al-Islam and what preceded the ummah of Musa al-Islam, meaning the Bani Israel before Musa al-Islam. And so that's the millat of Ibrahim. So it's included with this entity. It's included in this entity of which it is a tamseel. It is included in this entity of which it is a tamseel. And on the other side, it is also included, uh, it, it is also a tamseel with, um, it is also tamseel with um, uh, Ummah the Musa, right? So it's within, it's tamseel, the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa has a tamseel with Ummah the Musa and with Millat Ibrahim. Now looking at the tamseel with Millat Ibrahim, what you see is Sayyidina Ibrahim al-Islam had two sons. Hazrat Ismail and Hazrat Isaac. Now, in in the line lineage of Hazrat Isaac, from the beginning of the history or from Ibra Abrahamic history, you have prophets, a long line of prophets, culminating in Sayyidina Isa al Islam. But on the other side, on the side of Sayyidina Ismail al Islam, you only have one prophet, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. There's only one prophet in the line of Sayyidina Ismail, but he's the culmination and completion of prophecy itself and the covenant of Im Ahd Imamat, the covenant of priesthood, right? Um, so in the, on the same pattern, right? On the same pattern, um, Sayyidina Hassan and Sayyidina Hussein al-Islam are the uh, tamsilat of Sayyidina Ismail and Sayyidina Isaac al-Islam. And in the Imamat, because Nabuat in Ummat al Musa was Imamat, right? It's the highest degree of Imamat that's possible. But in our Ummah, because of Khatme Rasalat and Nabuat for Atiyat, there is no station, but there is still the, the, the purified Imamat, you know. And so, uh, in the line of Say Sayyidina Hassan al Islam, at the beginning of history, you have Sayyidina Hassan and Sayyidina Hussein, like you have Sayyidina Ismail and Sayyidina Ishaq. But then at the end, but then you have all these Imams in the line of Sayyidina Hussein and I would even say that the most of the Imamat in the Ummah really has been even after the 12th Imam in the line of Sayyidina Hussein al-Islam. But then you will have like, and, and honestly, a lot of the, the Hassani Sadat have, uh, you know, their character has been a little bit passive compared to the Hussaini Sadat. But at the end of history, there will be a Hassani Sayyid. And he will be Imam al-Mahdi, just the way he will be from the line of Sayyidina Hassan al-Islam, the same way that uh, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa himself was from the line of Sayyidina uh, Ismail al-Islam. There's a tamsilat of this sort of thing, you know. And um, 
There's a tamsilat of this sort of thing. And so that's my criticism of Shiism and the Shia Mahdi, that, that this idea... And I don't have a problem with Khalwat. There's nothing wrong. Like, Khalwat is totally possible. Obviously, it's in the Quran in some ways too. But it's totally possible. Allah can do that with His Qudrat. There's no, like, theological problem with that um, at all. Um, other than, like, there's no real precedence for it. Like, the prophets and imams, like, this type of situation happening like this. And... Um, uh, also, uh, the early Shias, historically, it's well established from a lot of different sources that the early Shias were in fact um, believers of what I'm upon, that the 12th Imam was the brother of the 11th Imam, and it's only 50 years later, after the passing of the real 12th Imam, that with the with Qafi and Asul Qafi, that they started doing this sort of thing. I'm going to start walking, um, because there's some guy walking toward me. And um, I think that's it. I think that's the only that's the only uh, criticism I have of Shia versus Sunni. Uh, I mean, uh, types of thinking that this is that this should be um, you know. So I, I obviously at the beginning of the stream more Shia leaning in my understanding not perfectly traditional Shiism but but in the end of history I'm more leaning towards Sunnism and then also the hikmat of it is Imam al-Mahdi uh, represents like uh, like in contrast to the Christian ethic or the Christian theology where you know blood sacrifice is needed to satisfy you know uh, the law of God or the nature of God almost it seems like in their theology that's what's needed and therefore Christ's sacrifice is necessary um, that whole thing um, and and so with the Shia theology it's like there has to be an unbroken line but from in my theology the beauty and the hikmat actually of Imam al-Mahdi is that a fallen broken man born of an imperfect man and therefore having the black thread in his heart um, he can. He, there is a toba that is possible that would purify him, that would engage in perfect islah. Like Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is capable of making perfect islah of anyone, even if they were born fallen in the dunya. You know, even if they were born fallen in the dunya, even if they were never perfect, and then they make a certain toba toba. If it's the zarurat of the ummah and the zarurat, and like the right of the person due to the perfection of their toba, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can I can um, can make a slav them, can purify them. Anyways, that's it.